What I want to do is I want to build you as a brand in real estate as a coach. The bigger your brand gets, the more people are going to want to join your team. You can sell your coaching program on the side for supplementary income. Use that coaching program to attract people to your team or they join your team and then they get access to the course for free. And that way you can still be selective because if somebody wants to join your team because you're a massive name, if they're not a good fit, they could buy your course. And if they are a good fit, then you can let them in and give them exclusive access for free. But now you're making that supplementary income. You're helping people that are even outside of your just local area. And because it's organic, Organic, it's immensely scalable. It's a lot harder to kind of start up, but it's immensely scalable. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Real Marketer Podcast. Every week, I coach a new realtor to help them find their next big opportunity to scale their business by leveraging Inabox's three part scale engine framework. What does this framework provide? A brand that sells systems and automations that help you accomplish more with less energy and lead generation strategies that are built to scale. Each week, we leverage the scale engine framework to guide the conversation and provide practical, actionable advice. Our goal at Inabox and the Real Marketer Podcast is to help realtors scale their business and achieve phenomenal success in their careers. So whether you're just starting out or you've been in the industry for years, you'll find value in these coaching sessions. Join us every week as we speak with realtors from all over the country, and in this case, the continent, because Donald, you are from Canada, um, and we help them take their careers to the next level. And like I said, today, we're joined by Donald Porter from Hamilton, Ontario. Donald, how are you doing today, man? Uh, good, man. Thanks for having me. My absolute pleasure. Listen, normally, in the sake of, um, I suppose, confidentiality, I don't say last names, or at least I try not to, because obviously what we're doing is we're helping realtors scale. And a lot of the time, realtors are concerned that, like, what if my clients see me here, like on the podcast, like maybe they'll think I'm struggling. In your case, that's not the concern because you've already had and are having a successful solo career. Your challenge is a little bit more specifically is how do you take your success, your knowledge, your insights and turn that into something that you can then share with other people by way of being a coach, by way of bringing people onto your team. Is that kind of a fair synopsis? Yeah, that's exactly it, yeah. So why don't you give us a 10-foot overview, tell us who you are, what you're doing in your life and your business, and what's going on? Uh, yeah, so who I am, uh, I'm a husband, father of a four-year-old and a two-year-old, uh, and just a classic family man, love sports, uh, love playing baseball in the summertime, do not want to ever play that in the wintertime because I – just finishing off a shoulder injury from sliding into a base on concrete, which was not great. <laughs> so I tore a rotator cuff. Um, outside the of that world, um, yeah, play music a lot, go to church, do that whole family lifestyle kind of thing. But on the real estate side of things, I am uh, very blessed to have just a phenomenal career so far. It's been, this is my fifth year in the industry. I've sold over 200 houses. Um and it's just been uh, a, a wild ride since I started. Uh, I've had a team for about a year and a half, just looking at refining, obviously, leadership skills, mentorship skills, getting those skills a little bit stronger and better to help. My, I've always said in this industry, it's not about um, the money. The money will come after. It's just like a byproduct of, of what I want to accomplish. But my accomplishments are basically helping the clients out. If I can just help one more, one more client, one more client, and then that becomes a spot where I can't help that many myself because I'm finite. So if I have the ability to bring on other individuals and actually help them grow their business, help them grow, I can actually multiply success because now I can actually work with the clients and, and help them achieve their goals and realize their dreams and watch them flourish in their, their new lifestyle or their new chapter. But then I can help other agents flourish as well by as a bride product from helping their clients and just an extension uh, of myself, I guess that way. So just to clarify, then your, your mission is still the end. You, your mission is still the real estate client or right now, as you're now a team leader, your mission has become the realtors that you're helping to elevate. Uh, both. I kind of wear two hats where I still help uh, my own clients out. I'm at a spot where I can't give that up. I also do love it. I do love pouring into each client and, and seeing that success is nothing more exciting to me than, than watching them grow. Uh, but on the other side of things, where, I, where we're chatting about today is just the, the growth of the team and, and helping them achieve their, their goals, really. So by helping one agent out, through that agent, I can help 20 to 40 extra clients a year just by preparing that agent. And all, none of that, but that means I've helped out 
21 to 41 families a year with that agent being a, a family that's added to that number. Okay. So I'm not sure if this is going to come into play later on, but I feel like I kind of want to just take a moment to say something that maybe it's obvious. Maybe you already know this, but just as a mindset thing, yeah. um, it's really, it's going to like, I always focus, for example, in the case of an avatar, anybody who's listened to my podcast, watch me, they know that I'm really big into understanding your avatar and making that avatar is one specific person because it's much harder to cater something to a lot of different people mm -hmm. than it is to cater something to one kind of person. And I would say, uh, again, whether this is going to come into play later on, I don't know. However, um, I would say just to refine the, the, the actual mission on your end, where it starts as how do I help as many, let's say, people get into their homes as possible. And then right now it kind of turns into the agent. I would say your mission, just as a, as a, as a preface, should be exclusively the agent. And then the byproduct of the agent is then going to be the people that you're helping, meaning it's the same thing as like, you wouldn't be doing this if there wasn't a way to make it profitable. That doesn't mean that you're chasing a profit. That just means that you're doing this and then it'll be profitable. So that core thing is always going to be the, the, the one thing that's at the top, but that doesn't mean that's kind of who you're catering to. So you've now taken a step down or initially, I guess, from the money, then how do I help people get into their homes? And then the money kind of just comes by the buy. You've taken now another step down, or maybe I could say up where now the people that you're helping are the realtors which will then help the people move into the homes, which will then kind of help the money. The reason I think that this might actually come into play as opposed to just some hypothetical mindset thing is because every day when you wake up as, as a coach and as a, as a team leader, I'm not sure, and we'll get into this a little bit uh, more in a second, but I'm not sure that you should ever really think about the end user as a client unless, let's say, some of your realtors aren't doing their job in a way that they should be. But I think if you woke up every day and only thought, how do I help more people get more transactions? How do I help my realtors make as much money as possible? They'll be in a position to help as many people as possible, and you'll be able to attract more of those people. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfect. Just a little quick mindset thing. Again, I'm sure it's something that you've already thought of, but... Um, okay. So the idea is that helping agents kind of becomes more leverageable and, and, and that will allow you to both get more people onto your team, which will make you more money, which will allow more people to get helped. And you'll now be able to help the realtors that you're trying to bring in. So how right now are you attracting these people, these agents? Um, just by when they do a showing, then I can call them, talk to them, uh, meeting them at the offices just more of an organic kind of approach. I know that there's a lot of teams out there that like to blast databases or blast a brokerage with cheesy sales lines. Hey, come work with me for whatever reason. But the thing is, I don't want to attract, I've, I've done that in the past where I've attracted the wrong kind of people who just want handouts. They're looking for referrals, not leads. And they're looking for uh, the easy street instead of actually wanting to work. So I've had that mistake in the past. That, that's been removed from the business. And, uh, yeah, just looking for, I've been doing it a little more organically, I guess you could say. So kind of providing value where you can. Exactly. So by providing value, then people end up, they're coming, they're just kind of finding their way over to you. Yeah. Well, I've also done, uh, like sales courses, training courses, hosted them at my office outside of uh, the brokerage and try to add value that way. And that gets more organic conversation going started. Uh, and then from that, I can even, I have no problem teaching people stuff because no, most agents aren't going to put the majority of what I say into practice. So if I have that teachable, like lesson or course or class that I do, I can have a, I guess, a, an interview without actually being an interview. And if I do want to pursue that agent further, then I'll try and set up a meeting. Um, but yeah, I've also learned to be a lot more pickier with who I'm bringing on it, as in Jim Collins says from good to great, it's having the right people on the bus, not just filling it full of warm bodies. And you, you appreciate that approach. Uh, yeah, I, appre I appreciate having the right people on the bus. I've had the wrong people on the bus and people just taking up space. I've had great people. Don't get me wrong. Like I wouldn't have brought them on a team if I didn't uh, believe in them. Yep. But just, uh, just, refining the process so that way i have wasting less energy and and not helping people that wouldn't appreciate it i guess you could say right so the energy exerted into the people meaning you put a, you pour a lot of yourself into the people that you bring onto your team oh yeah 
And so that's one of the reasons why it's almost a necessity to be so, um, I guess, selective over who you bring on. Exactly. Yeah, I've poured in, like, I can think of a couple of individuals where I've poured in tons of energy uh, and they've done nothing to little in as way of monetary gains for the company. But again, that's not my priority, but it's pretty annoying when you are answering thousands of phone calls, answering tons of questions, pouring into them, coming alongside them, helping them out so much, and then just realizing they're not a fit. Or, well, yeah, or, from a practicality perspective, I mean, it, it's again, like money is, let's say, at the top of the pyramid, but that doesn't mean that that's what's motivating you. That just means it's what practically is paying your bills that you can keep going. Exactly. And then, so then the mission is how do we help as much many people get into their homes as possible? You've accomplished that as much as you can on your own. And now you're ready to scale. And by helping the people that aren't going to be leveraging this, you're actually hurting the people that you could be helping get into homes because you now have less time for the people that are going to implement it and help people get into their homes. So forgetting about the money, even though that's one thing, the mission is not moving along when your time is not well spent. Exactly. So you have a moral obligation to scale your time. It's nothing to do, meaning obviously your life will be better. You'll make more money. You'll have more time. But from a selfless perspective, it has nothing to do with you. You have an obligation to scale your time and to leverage yourself as much as possible. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So let me ask then uh, from an overhead perspective, let's say you bring somebody on and, for whatever reason, let's say you don't have to spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with these individuals. Would you be as selective about who you're bringing on? Or if it's pretty streamlined and automated, you'd be okay kind of just bringing them on whoever kind of wants to, I guess, join your team, join your program and learn from you. So I've had people who can just plug and play, as you could almost say, right? And uh, bring them on board, instantly producing revenue, phenomenal real estate agents, but absolutely horrible personalities. Yep. And that caused, uh, it created almost like a cancer within the team. So th that as a byproduct, sure, they were fantastic. They produced revenue, but it wasn't the right fit. And so that was a hard one to let go of. But as a result, it caused more friction between myself and other members who were, were producing as well. Yep. And so the casualties in the process became too great that it, i would have never have hired them in the first place does that make sense absolutely so the question that i was asking without actually asking this is let's say we could leverage your time really well would you still have to be selective over who you bring in and it seems like even if we did scale your time create programs and trainings it's not like exp at downline where you don't see these people yep. there actually is a culture inside of your office that you're trying to build and you need to bring in the right people as well exactly okay yeah that makes sense okay so then there's kind of another element to this, another layer of this is that, yes, we can leverage your time as much as possible, but it's much less about getting as many people to join your team as possible. And it's much more about how do we build up your authorities so that you have as many applicants as possible so that you can then be selective. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it for sure. Meaning right now, it doesn't seem like you have the luxury of, I mean, you're going to do it because that that you're, you've got to do what's right for you, but you don't really have the luxury to be so selective without minimizing the amount of people that are actually on your team. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So what I want to kind of do with you, and we're going to break this down in just a moment, but what I want to do is I want to build you as a brand in real estate as a coach. And then what that will end up happening is if the bigger your brand gets, the more people are going to want to join your team. You can sell your coaching program on the side for Again, we'll talk about different pricing structures, but you can sell your program on the side for supplementary income. Use your team, use that coaching program to attract people to your team where they join your program, or they join your brokerage, or they join your team, sorry, and then they get access to the course for free. Um, and that way you can still be selective because if somebody wants to join your program because you're a massive name in real estate, sorry, if somebody wants to join your team because you're a massive name, if they're not a good fit, they could buy your course. And if they are a good fit, then you can let them in and give them exclusive access for free. But now you're making that supplementary income. You're helping people that are even outside of your just local area. And because it's organic, it's immensely scalable. It's a lot harder to kind of start up, but it's immensely scalable, if that makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. So the three elements that I want to talk about is, first off, um, building you up as the expert, Right. How do we make you as massive of a name as possible where people, you just have so much brand authority and recognition that the second you walk into a room, nobody questions it. The second thing I want to talk about is how you're going to price your course 
to not only make yourself, make your brokerage, sorry, make your team look as much as, sorry, to not only make your team look as valuable as possible, but to create as much supplementary income as possible. And then the last thing I want to talk about is actually agent attraction. How do you go about bringing more people in? So I'm going to break these down one by one. How do we make you look like the expert? So the first thing that we need to do for you is figure out what your area of expertise is. Now, we've had this conversation before. Yep. Um, and as I recall, it was all about sales, correct? Yeah, my background in sales uh, and also maybe marketing. So why don't you tell us a little bit about sales, marketing, and how that applies in your business? Yeah, so my uh, so I went to school for marketing, so I understand a lot of that. I took a lot of fascination with uh, consumer behavior and then understanding how the consumer behaves to marketing, cons consumers behave to um, different things can also increase your level of, of um, I guess, you can, it, it, knowing how that, how that uh, relates also can increase your level of customer service, I guess you could say. And through customer service and education uh, is how I use the sales, right? So the sales aspect, there's obviously certain things that I've put together for training these agents on how to use your words or just change your words slightly. So instead of things like, you know, in, in every situation, always 100% or in every situation, you just change things to virtually always. Because then that'll, that little slight word changes the mindset of the consumer. Like, okay, well, he's not full of crap. He's virtually which gives that little percentage of room for error but yeah so just changing your words on sales to try and get the client so it's i always equate sales to almost like especially digital marketing sales to be like uh internet dating you're not going to ask them to marry you right away you got to build that relationship and in order to build that relationship you have to be careful of the words you choose you can't be completely open and honest right away with your intention otherwise they wouldn't flirt with you online exactly so then you got to go from that point to they get to the in person, which is like your first date. And you got to, again, be careful with your words until you get more comfortable and you actually start to build a proper relationship. And then you can you can move towards the the closing side of things. And that's where you would get to the engagement level. Um, but, yeah, that's that's and then the, and the process along the way is, is obviously being careful of your words, mm -hmm. using education. Uh, and using and knowing the consumer behavior behind the marketing as to why that that education is important. Also, what kind of person are you working with? What's their personality type? What are they more fixated? Are they more statistical based? Or are they more emotional based? When they're more emotional based, then maybe you, you have those in person longer conversations. You can't just throw them a quick text message. They'll think you're upset. Or they maybe are way more statistical and short. So talking in point form really gets them happy because you're not wasting their time. And then also backing it up with tons of data. So it's also, there's obviously more than just those two types of personalities, but using that understanding of the consumer to give them the right information to help along that dating process. I want to recognize something that as talking about this, this is not something that you clearly woke up and like, I guess are playing guru for a second. Like this is something that you've done in your career. This is what's helped you get those 200, like averaging 40 transactions a year, which is ridiculous in your first five years of real estate. And I'm sure it wasn't 40, 40 every year. I'm sure the first one was less than year two and then it only went up from there. Yeah. So this is something that I believe is not going to be such a long path to you becoming the undisputed expert on one condition. We have to create something proprietary around this. So let me explain. When you hear Jordan Belfort, Right. Yep. Do you know what his sales technique is called? Straight line persuasion. So I am positive that you know all about straight line persuasion because you know this stuff. However, even if you didn't know what straight line persuasion was, first off, the guy has a movie made about him. The second yep. thing is he has a framework called straight line persuasion that he invented. And so if somebody wants to say something like Jordan Belfort doesn't really know what he's talking about, by saying something like that, you're inherently calling out his entire framework. And so it's a lot more of a commitment for somebody to question your expertise because they're not just questioning whether or not the guy's legitimate. They're questioning this entire way of selling. And if people have had success with it, you no longer have a right to question that because it works. Yeah. And so if you were to come in and say, I'm going to teach you how to sell, then if you were to come in and say, I'm going to teach you what I know, they can kind of do research. And it's all very like, 
it's very like spectrum based, like how good really is he on this line? However, if you say I used my, um, I don't know, let's say dating method selling, let's call okay. it dating selling, sure. right? just hypothetically. So I use the dating method framework to sell more houses. It's what allowed me to sell 200 houses in my first year of real estate. And I want to offer you that for free. And the dating framework comprises of three parts, A, B, and C. And if you follow this framework, the dating framework, you're going to experience this kind of success. There's such immediate authority that's built up. And so what I would say for you is in order to become the expert in your industry, meaning industry, not necessarily meaning real estate, I guess I should use the word niche. In order to be the expert in your niche, meaning selling, and let's even refine it a little bit more, let's say dating method selling, whatever you want to call that in real estate, there's, it's so specific to the point where when you bring people into your ecosystem by way of Instagram, by way of Facebook, Facebook group, YouTube, whatever, when they buy into the words that you're saying, they almost inherently and automatically buy into the framework that you're providing, which the only way that they get access to is by going through you. Okay. So the question is, how do we make this proprietary? What does that framework look like? And what can we call it that allows you to be the owner and the inventor of this framework? Okay. Uh... Let's start with the first part of that. Sure. What steps are there? Again, overarching. So you spoke a lot about understanding the word usage to use the tonalities and the inflections. That was a lot of what you spoke about. Yep. So understanding. So, yeah. Okay. So then, um, tonality, it's all, but it's all within like, so body language, but it's also tonality. It's uh, presentation, like bring, making yourself presentable, but knowing how to present. Um, so all of this, like there are subcategories. The idea is almost like if you've ever been, if you ever zoomed all the way out on Google earth, when you zoom in a little bit more, you see more texture. So you zoom in and then you see like a country and then you zoom in more and then you see like a landscape and then you zoom in more and you see like a city and then more and you see like streets and then more and you see houses. That's kind of the idea. So when you zoom out, okay. in the case of Jordan Belfort, the fully zoomed out is straight line persuasion. Then you zoom in and you see a little bit more about what that means. So I want to zoom out a little bit so that let's say what we're talking about is communication. Step one is communication. Okay. Yep. And all of, and then as you zoom in more, you've got tonality, you've got presentation, you've got inflection, and all of that stuff. So, what are the three overarching zoomed out steps? Yeah, so communication be one for sure. Uh, communication. Um, there has to be a level of marketing to get the communication started. Uh, but it's actually community marketing is a level of communication. Uh, customer service would that be one? Because you got to communicate, but then I could still fall under communication. Um, Communication. I like I like the differentiation of sales and marketing because I think most people don't realize that they're different. Yes, they are very different. So I could even say, to be honest, that your three-step framework, and we can think of semantics as a way to make this work with the name of whatever we decide to call it, but maybe it's mindset, marketing, sales. Okay. Something like that. Again, we can work with the semantics. So let's say... If where we're starting from, of let's say if the entire idea behind this is the dating selling tactic, so the dating selling framework. Okay. The idea is is that mindset, instead of calling it mindset, let's say, it could be called um, confidence. Okay. Instead of calling marketing, we could call it um, value. Well, like in marketing, it's all about creating value. So, but I mean, in, in keeping a parallel, like in the world of like dating, what would be the equivalence of like marketing is how you present yourself. Okay. Right. So the idea is marketing code could all be all about your presentation. Yep. Okay. And then sales could all be about the, the hunt, let's say, whatever the heck, <laughs> yeah. all these things. But the idea is you've now got a three and it doesn't even have to be so revolutionary, but the idea is you've, you've named it, you've labeled it, you've made it proprietary. And now just by association, it's yours. Perfect. Okay. okay? So let's say, let's even call these just tentatively, because I think that this is going to be something that you're going to, you can do on your own outside of this call, um, is to create a three-step framework and to really make it work for you. But right now, the three-step selling framework that belongs to Donald is mindset, marketing, and sales. Sure. 
Okay. Um, let's call this the, uh, we call it the dating method, right? Yeah. Okay. And again, this is all tentative, so it doesn't really matter what you're calling it. Like afterwards, we can really play around with some names and stuff. But the idea is, is you now have a proprietary name for your framework. You've broken it down. And then as you dig into each of these steps a little bit more, you break it down a little bit more. Very the sad. main point of this is that by creating this course, by creating your proprietary framework, you now are the authority. And then the last thing is to kind of build your own authorities. Now you've got it. How do you go and present it? And I would literally say it's just a matter of pro posting on YouTube, posting podcasts, if you could, posting on Instagram reels and TikTok and all of that jazz. And by breaking it down into mindset, marketing and sales and then mul multiple subcategories, you can now find, let's say, five posts all about this subcategory of mindset and then five about this subcategory of marketing and then this subcategory of sales. And you just basically run it like that. You're creating posts about subcategories of your framework. Okay. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, that sounds easy. Okay. I would even say that if you wanted to get really streamlined and efficient in your work, I would go into, let's say, real estate groups like Real Estate Mastermind, Facebook groups, or even my group. Um, look at questions that people are asking about real estate, like how can I be more successful with this and that. Just take a note of all questions that you see. Put them onto a separate spreadsheet and that question will be the title of your next YouTube video. And you're answering those questions in the context of your dating method selling framework. Okay. Yeah. So now you're able to create a whole bunch of content, make yourself look like the expert. And it's just about consistency, putting as much content out there as much as possible so that more people see it, more people interact with you. And obviously the more content you have, the more people will see you as the expert and the easier time you'll have of actually getting people to join your ecosystem. All right. Okay. So now we have a course kind of conceptually built out where you've got your steps broken down. You've got your sub steps broken down. You know, by having this course, you kind of are building your own expertise. The question is, how do you price your course correctly? That was step two of this, right? Yes. Okay. So I would say that there are a few different methods. And let me ask you kind of what your idea is behind this course. Is the course in the program specifically and exclusively to bring more people into your, into your team? Is it to kind of make a supplementary income? What would you say is the purpose of creating a course around this? Um, I don't know. I could go. I could go either direction with it. It could be to bring in more people on a team, but then I could quickly go a different rep method. But then pricing would become important. So you could always do price skimming, where you start off high to help bring in the level of people, uh, bring in people in the team. If that like that works, it gets to the level where you want to be, then I can just draw the price and then start value-based pricing it to, to the open market. So how much money do you think someone will be able to make, Donald, if they understood your entire, again, just tentatively, if they understood your entire dating method framework, how much money do you think somebody would be able to make in real estate? A lot. Uh, I guess it, maybe not a lot because it all depends on where they're trading. So if you're trading in the GTA area, then you'd be making hundreds, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, no problem. If you're trading in somewhere, say you said North America, right? So if you're trading somewhere middle of the United States where it's not as populated, then maybe it's like two hundred thousand dollars a house. So you're making a hundred grand a year, depending on commission splits. Then again, but probably at least a hundred. Hypothetically, they've got the tools now available to them where if they just want to grind out as much as possible, they're in control basically of how much money they make, right? Exactly. So if I was to say that your course is worth $15,000, do you think somebody would make more than $15,000 on this? Hey, oh, yeah. Within six months, for sure. For sure. The yeah. only question is, is that you're trying to attract the people that can't afford $15,000 a month. Because if uh, Sorry, $15,000. Because if, if they could just part with that much money... To be honest, it'd probably be a solo agent, right? Yep. Fair enough. So these are all kinds of things to consider. It's like really the whole idea of value-based pricing when it comes to knowledge, it's a really hard thing to quantify because I'll give you the knowledge and you can go make a million dollars from this, but it's just about whether or not you're going to do it. So pricing becomes all about making yourself self-accessible almost exclusively to the people that you're trying to make yourself accessible to. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think it would be crazy for you to say that it's actually worth $50,000 and try to charge that. But then again, obviously, people aren't going to pay that. So what I would say is 
you've got really three options when it comes to pricing. Step one is you under chart, you undervalue it, you underprice it, let's say. So let's say you can charge $9.97 for this with an upsell attached on the back end of it where you want to get as many people through the door as possible so that this is what I gave you for $9.97. I've got a $4.997 course. Imagine how much great information is in there and you're kind of attracting them to the ecosystem at a more accessible price. That's the first way of looking at this. The second way of looking at this is you price it fairly, which if this is going to be your main source of income, that's probably the best thing to do. Okay. But then the third thing is you val you price it what it's actually worth, which it's worth a ton of money. But the step is, is that in order to get access to this course, you either pay what it is, $50,000, $25,000, or if you join my team, you get access to this for free. Okay. Yeah. And then you just charge basically however much money you can that you could say it with a straight face. Yeah, that's fair. So looking at those three strategies, number one is the upsell, number two, doing it fairly, and number three, attracting more people to your team. Which of those do you think is the one that you want to look at? Uh, I'd say one or three because right now there is not a huge ecosystem built. I'd have to build more courses, which I can do, but that would take time and Building the first course would be step one. Okay. So I would say then, I would say while we're testing market value, while we're testing the value, uh, sorry, while we're trying to find product market fit, I would price it a little bit under what it's actually worth. Okay. You're never going to, like, let's say it's worth $20,000. Like, no one's, again, people aren't going to pay that right now. But if you were to charge, let's say, two ninety seven, dollars you could get this into more people's hands. More people would buy your course. Again, you'd still give it away for free. It doesn't mean as much because it's only a $300 course. But for $297, you can keep in touch with people who are actually doing it, see how they're doing in the course, continue to refine it. And then now that in your ecosystem, you could upsell them at any point in time when you decide to create a new course. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's definitely good. Okay. So now when it comes to pricing, I think just making something as accessible as possible is probably the best bet. So now looking at the first two of the three steps, the first thing is how do we make you an expert? And the idea is to create a framework or a process that's exclusively yours, like Jordan Belford's straight line selling persuasion, like um, uh, Brandon Morenin's reverse selling technique, right? Like uh, Tony Robbins has like Unleash the Beast Within or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but they all have their thing. Now you have your method. That's how you become the expert. And then you just post about your method all the freaking time. Like, okay. for example, right now, at the beginning of this podcast, I said, we leverage the scale engine framework. So if somebody doesn't like the content I'm saying, they're not just questioning me. They're questioning, questioning the entire scale engine framework, which works for people. It's a lot harder for people to question your expertise when you position it like this. The second step is a pricing. We're going to price it a little bit under what it's actually worth to try to get more people in the door and try to gauge product market fit as much as possible and then now the last thing is how do you attract as many people into your ecosystem as possible right yep okay fair enough yeah so what methods do you use to communicate with people like organically so facebook youtube instagram what do you use primarily uh facebook is what i actually use but i have a social media manager who also does the instagram youtube uh and does manage the facebook those are so those three for sure um and then for my actual own clients too, is also through CRMs or my cell phone. Okay. Would it be easier for you to create one central location where everybody is, where you could basically just go in there and when somebody joins, I guess like an email list, you have their email address. You just basically communicate with them whenever you want. Yeah, that, that could be easy. Yeah, it was a lot more scalable like that as well. Like for example, let's say, I forgot the guy's name, Tristan something, the guy who owns, uh, runs the lab code agent group. Okay. I'm not a couple, sure. There's yeah. a couple hundred thousand agents in there. Wow. The guy wants to sell a product. Let's say the guy creates a $300 course. He wants to run a five day challenge. He posts something into the group. I mean, be basically before he even posts the thing, he's already got a couple hundred registrants because as soon as he posts it, people are all over it. Right. Yep. So things just get easier. So for me, I would say where if you could have like, let's say a Facebook group, where you're mm -hmm. not mentioning your brokerage at all, all you're doing in that group is adding as much value as possible in the guide section. And now instead of asking and trying to recruit people to your team, you can recruit them to your webinars, recruit them to your seminars, that's fine. But instead of trying to say, have you ever thought about switching brokerages, you start way earlier than that. Say, would you be interested in joining my Facebook group? We have all of this and then tell them all about 
all of the free resources that you have in there. And why wouldn't they join that? Yeah. So when they join that, you now are in a position as number one, the leader of that Facebook group, which builds your authority, but also you could post whatever value you want in there. And it's like, they're just sitting there waiting for you to just drop knowledge and drop value. And you do that long enough, your time becomes very, very scalable. Your efforts are now focused on how do you make this dating method look as legitimate as possible via YouTube, via Facebook, via Instagram? How do you promote as much value as possible into your Facebook group? How do you bring as many people into your Facebook group as possible? As they enter the group, you can ask them questions like, what's the biggest bottleneck you're facing in your business? How, are you currently where you at in, in, where you want to be in your business? And use that to, to do research on what your actual target audience looks like. And now okay. you're gaining the insights that you need about your people. And you now have like an ecosystem or an area, a central location for you to just drop value as consistently as possible. And then once a week or something, drop something like, hey, if anybody's looking to purchase a course or if anybody's looking to join a team, this is what we offer. This is what we do. And when you've built up that rapport over an extended period of time, people are a lot more susceptible to attend one of your webinars, to join your brokerage, to join your team, to have a conversation with you than if you're just some random schmuck who calls out of the blue and says, hey, can you please join my team? Because that's kind of what happens otherwise. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that makes sense. So looking at all of that kind of in a nutshell, does it, number one, make sense? Number two, do you find it, do you, does this come across as something that is accessible that you're able to do? And then number three is, do you have anything that needs further clarification on? I uh, definitely think it's something I can do. Just got to carve out time and time block it in. Um, it makes sense. I think as far as further clarity, it would be coming down to like, as I'm building it or as I'm doing it, I may have questions, but otherwise it, the concept seems simple enough and it definitely doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's again, step A is make your course which just think about like the Google Earth zooming in and zooming out. That's really what it's got to look like. So make your course, yep. price it to attract the people that you want to attract, and then create a place like a Facebook group, for example, where as many people can join as possible without having to commit themselves to you so that, do you want to join my Facebook group? Yeah, why not? I'm just not like I'm joining your team or anything right now. And then I'll join your Facebook group. And then you can just continue, just like kind of like a database. People will give you their email address in exchange for, all of your scripts or all of this or all of that. All right. Um, and then finally, one more question is, do you feel equipped to use this course to then scale yourself, scale your time, leverage your time better? By the way, also refer your team, like tell your team, the people on your team, instead of asking you for help, say, this is the module that you can find it. Then they can kind of show you there. Do you feel like this is kind of the avenue that's going to help take your business over the top? Yeah. Yeah. That would definitely help a lot. Okay. Yeah. So all the strategies and ideas discussed in this episode were made possible by Innobox and the Scale Engine Framework. If you'd like to learn more about how you can scale your real estate business to the next level, you might want to check out Innobox. It's a coaching program and a CRM designed exclusively for realtors. Our team of experienced professionals and coaches will guide you through a proven three-part scale engine framework to help you scale your business and achieve success just like you heard on today's episode. In a box includes one-on-one -on -one coaching, access to a private community of like-minded realtors, a variety of resources and tools to help you scale your business, the complete three-part scale engine blueprint for you to follow at your own leisure, one of the most comprehensive and simple to use CRMs on the market, and way more. Don't let your competition get ahead of you guys. If you're ready to scale, then now is the time to invest in yourself and in your business with in a box. Go to goinabox.com to learn more and sign up today. And if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, Send an email to Oliver at goinitbox.com or just send me a direct message and let me know why you think you'd be a good fit. Donald, it's been an absolute pleasure. I want to thank you so much for your time, for coming on and opening up about your business today. Thanks, man. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me.